consequences we must usually have Holy Spirit by our visitation. But our Lord Jesus Christ, when he cometh, may find within us a mansion and prepare for himself to dwell in. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with our spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment, and the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than this. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, Christ have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. Lord, have mercy upon mm -hmm. us. The Lord be with you. And with our spirit. spirit. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things do come, grant to us, thy humble servants, that thy by thy holy inspiration we may think those things which are good, and by thy merciful guiding perform the same. Through thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The epistle is written in the first chapter of the epistle of St. James, beginning at the 22nd verse. Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Here endeth the epistle. The Holy Gospel is written in the 16th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the 23rd verse. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. At that day ye shall ask in my name, and say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you, because he hath loved me, and hath believed that I came out from God, I came forth from the Father, and am come into the world. Again I leave the world, and go to the Father. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speaketh thou plainly, and speaketh no proverb. Now we are sure that thou knowest all things, and needeth not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. Jesus answered him, do ye now believe? Behold, the hour comes, yea, it is come, that ye shall be scattered, every man of his to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tri tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. The Gospel of our Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. 
almighty maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all the worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and Apostolic Church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In today's epistle reading, James said, Be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. His phrase, deceiving your own selves, warns that it's very easy to Imagine we're doers of the word, when in fact, we're not. James' epistle was most likely penned after the Council of Jerusalem, which is, that's the council where the question of accepting the Gentiles as Christians without first converting to Judaism was settled. The hardliners demanded the Gentiles go through all the ritual and physical ordeals, to which it was pointed out that Jesus had superseded the old law. And all of that was unnecessary. Did the hardline convert first, hardliners, really think that they were doing the, doing the word? Doing the, the work of Jesus? James asked that, or were they simply deceiving themselves? James' message is just as relevant today as it was then. Do we deceive ourselves into thinking that we're doers of the word when in fact we're not? Many of us seem to have a far higher regard for the thou shalt nots that are in the law than the thou shalt's. For example, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Paul tells us that charity is the paramount virtue, that without it, our faith is baseless. But true charity is much more than giving your worn out clothes to the goodwill. Charity is being kind to people you really dislike. Charity is showing patience to people who bother us. Charity is caring for people who insult and abuse us. But then as Jesus points out, being kind to people we like is easy. Even the most awful people are kind to the ones that they love. Doing the word means practicing our faith. We need to do the Word because it's only through continual practice that we find ourselves doing naturally things that are very difficult. Now, Jesus gives us that promise, ask and ye shall receive. Well, that's a comforting statement, but it's a shame that many of us don't believe it. Of course, we don't mean to say that Jesus is lying to us, but we really just don't believe it. We look on this statement as if it were symbolic, perhaps. And why should we believe it? We think that it isn't true from our own experience. 
at least we know it isn't quite that simple. For the time that we were little, when we prayed for a toy or for a pet, we asked in Jesus' name and have been disappointed. As adults, we ask for financial relief, we pray for physical healing, we pray for mending of broken relationships, we pray for love, sickness. We pray for others in dangers of death, and our prayers have seemingly been unanswered. How can we believe that if we ask in Jesus' name, we will receive? Even scriptures is full of failed requests. Saint Philip asked Jesus to show him the Father. Jesus tells him to look at him, and he will see the Father. For Philip, who didn't understand, asking Jesus didn't seem to work. He found out later. St. Peter asked that Jesus be spared when Jesus revealed the ordeal, the passion that he was about to face. We have ever reasoned by experience and human understanding to believe that the promise asking you shall receive is not true. Every reason but one. And that is that Jesus made the promise and in Jesus, there is no darkness, and there is no deception. He speaks only the truth. So the promise must be true. So how can we reconcile our experience with this promise? Well, sometimes when we pray in desperation or in pride, we fail to pray in faith to believe in the full power of the name we invoke, Jesus Christ. The apostles claim to believe Jesus in this very gospel, and he points out the weakness of their faith. Do you now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, and you will be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. The truth that underlies the promise is simply our Father will not contradict himself. He made the promise to be our God and to make us his people. But he will not negate that promise by giving us those things which are contrary to his will for us or the world. In this God keeps the higher promise. He is the Father. The godly promise, he gives us the grace to understand that we should ask of him so that we will show forth his glory and complete his will for us. He knows that we're worried about the immediate and earthly uh, tribulations that we face. We pray about our needs, our temptations, our sickness, and death. But he commands us not to be anxious about these things and to put heavenly things first. And he will provide for every other need as he sees fit and proper for us. The mother of James and John, they begged for an earthly place of honor for, their, for her son on the right and the left of Jesus. But you see, he had already reserved another greater place for them on an eternal and heavenly throne. He wouldn't give them less than what he reserved for them, even to fulfill a mother's earthly desires. So, St. Peter, he asked his friend Jesus to be spared of suffering and death. But the Father had determined to use that suffering and death for a greater purpose, to save people, Peter, and every one of us. He couldn't relieve Peter of his sadness for his friend, Jesus, because it would have robbed Peter of the joy and peace 
that would come when the Father's will for Jesus had been completed. St. Paul, he prayed continually for his pain in his side to be relieved. But the Lord explained the pain was a gift, a shield of grace to defend Paul from his pride and to preserve him for the heavenly destiny reserved for him. The Lord will not relieve us of the pain and shame that keeps us from sin or drives us to beg forgiveness for the sins that we have committed. In the Gospel reading today, Jesus said, Whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Herethro have you asked nothing in my name, but ask, and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. What does Jesus mean by ask? Well, Jesus is telling us to pray. Jesus is talking about our, our prayer life. And the part where he says, ask in my name, or pray in my name, Thinking about the many prayers I've heard, some out of my own mouth, I don't think we all understand what praying in Jesus' name really means. It's not simply saying something and adding in Jesus' name to it. That doesn't make it a prayer. The actions of saying a sentence with in Jesus' name at the end over and over is not going to force God to answer our prayer in the way we desire. It's not some magic to get what we want. To ask in Jesus' name is to make a genuine prayer recognizing that everything good comes from God. To recognize the need to glorify God through his Son, and being ordered by the Holy Spirit. True prayer in Jesus' name is following the will of God. In John 15, 5, it was said, Without me, you can do nothing. You can't baptize without the Holy Spirit, nor can you transform bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. A true prayer is effective only if it's imbued with and directed to God through His Son and guided by the Holy Spirit. Effective prayer is not what or how often that you pray, but to whom you are praying. Prayer is not what you think you need or want, but asking for what God thinks is best for you. When people pray about their worries and anxieties, they're focusing on themselves, usually to the exclusion of others, and most likely dwelling on here in this world, and not looking to their place with God in the next, that life ever after part. Huh? Jesus said, ask, and you shall receive that your joy be complete. Jesus wasn't promising you wishes like some genie by making promises for your temporary satisfactions here in this world, but instead opening to you the total joy to be found in heaven with our Father. Do you pray for riches, for an easier life, for relief from some pain in your side, to be famous, to be powerful? Those are all earthly things that will fade in time. It would be better to pray for those things that God said were most important. Pray to God with a firm conviction that He is wise and mighty and worthy to be worshipped. Pray for the salvation of your soul through Jesus' sacrifice and pray for the Holy Spirit to guide you. Pray for those around you that they too receive the everlasting joy promised by God. Pray that we will demonstrate that we love God. Pray that we demonstrate 
We love everyone we meet. Prayer. You need to think about what you're saying. What you're asking. Whom is the prayer directed towards? And to what purpose? Does it give glory to God? Does it lift up your neighbor? It's a lot to think about. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy and own happiness in thee. The holy sacrifice is offered to the praise and glory of God, and in thanksgiving for the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ, and for his glorious resurrection. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostles taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our revelations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with a spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all they who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially to thy servant Juan, our bishop, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness, all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee, of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially those whom we mention in the secrecy of our hearts. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, this merciful Father. Thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all of his past. Be bright that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins, and who all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul said. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Here also was St. John said, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with our spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. But chiefly we bow to praise thee for the glorious resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the very Paschal Lamb which was offered for us, and hath taken away the sin of the world. And by his death hath destroyed death, and by his rising to life again is restored to us everlasting life. Therefore with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We do not presume to come to this thy table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same, Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy does give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, the south of death upon the cross for our redemption, who may bear by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And in institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these, thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. When the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which was given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and 
when he had given thanks, he gave to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which was shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. which was given for thee, preserve my body and soul in the world of us in life. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sins of the world, happy are they who are called to his supper. May the body of our blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bless thee, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church might receive remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy for our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, Almighty Father, 
world without end. Amen. <clears throat> and the same with Gloria in Excelsis. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Let us pray. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, support us all the day long, until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes, and the busy world is hushed, and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in thy mercy grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest, and peace at the last. Amen. Mm -hmm.